Buzzsaw Bloodhouse is a 2017 survival horror game developed by Puppet Combo and centers around a deep web community celebrating Halloween with a macabre Red Room livestream in which young girls are kidnapped and forced to navigate a house full of traps that were probably rejected from the Saw franchise for the viewer's sick and sadistic pleasure. Having the player view the player model from a third person perspective, they play as various teenage girls who are tasked with navigating the rooms of the house while avoiding the blood spewing and blood-curdling death traps that take immense skill and navigational precision to conquer, and at any given moment, a chainsaw-wielding maniac, straight out of prison since he hasn't bothered to take off his jumpsuit, will pop out and walk in slow motion in a mildly frivolous attempt to kill the player. Think of it as a parkour game, seen through a shitty early 2000s-style security camera with tons of grainy VHS-style static only possible through a really primitive livestream with the most soulless and degenerate chat on top of that. Pretty much all of the gameplay involves the player jumping to avoid their deaths, dodging to avoid their deaths, being patient, jumping, dodging, you get the point. If you haven't figured it out yet, you might want to have been learned in parkour if you ever get kidnapped by a silhouette that looks vaguely like the Zodiac Killer and end up in the second most deliberately cruelly designed house ever behind the Winchester house. I mean, come on! Staircases that lead to nowhere, hidden corridors, vertical and horizontal windows? That woman just wanted to mess with people. There's no forgiveness in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, enough of that shit. It's described by many as the hardest puppet combo game because there's only a finite amount of lives the player has before it's game over, the traps require immense skill to get past, and on top of those, where the maniac appears isn't confidently predictable. Show this to people who think Squid Game would be hard, but what distinguishes this game from others in the puppet combo franchise is that it's been developed over the course of five years now, and until recently has been officially released, coming out in increments such as the beta release, updates to those, an official release, and then updates to that release. So throughout the course of the construction of this game, what has changed, what's been expunged, what's been added, and what's been made different in general? The first first game footage we could find was that of version 0.1.5, which was the best in our opinion. It appears to not have had a prologue. The first trap is pretty basic, and it spikes coming out of the floor and back down again, straight out of Wily e. Coyote's arsenal. After that, there's circular saws buzzing that the player has to carefully shimmy through. Succeeding that in the wet dream of a lumberjack who works part-time as a corrections officer, there's a platform where the player has to hop on that goes over a barbed wire pit, one of the easiest traps. After Words. When the player enters a chamberous room, they're eventually led to rooms with blocks and hearts in them. We think this is the most redundant part of the map, because there's not many traps, and even though the maniac could be present, he's not that much of a threat, even in praxis, especially in open areas like this, because he's just so slow. So if there's one thing we'd improve about this game, we'd make him walk ever so slightly faster, and have it not look like his inner cogs and pistons need some WD-40. I mean, geez, had we not known he was a manlet, we would have thought it was Mark Zuckerberg under that mask. The next trap, or set of traps, are more cirque saws. Be patient and move through them carefully. Then there's a set of wooden planks the player has to traverse, which shouldn't be that unfamiliar. Quite a few sets of swinging chainsaws and spiked floors later, there's a couple of nail guns in a section of the game where four spaces of a maze-like section each have their own switch, which not only reminds us of those colored rooms in the Atari Halloween game, but of Mask of the Red Death as well. More wooden planks and nail gun, so much to where it's starting to look like the Bible as a matter of fact. A spiked floor later, there's a platform that passes under a myriad of cirque saws, and this is honestly one of the best and the most cinematic parts of the game, so much to where it truly demonstrates the creative capacity of puppet combo and what they're capable of. After that, there's this area. It's a bit too much to explain. Then the game ends. The 2.1 release of the game introduces an introduction sequence, funnily enough, and the young girls are held late at school, but when they go outside at night, they're captured by a really sketchy silhouette in a dark van, and then they're brought to the facility where the game begins in what seems like a child's bedroom. After the player moves the bed and opens the hidden door to press a lever to open another hidden door, if you're just now thinking that the place in this new update is a giant mindfuck, down as many shots of southern comfort as you can, because you have no idea 
media as to what lurks in a pretty inaccurate version of what the deep web is. After walking past the softcore porn, the first trap a player will come across is a floor of spikes, which is easy to jump over. After that, it's 1 to 100 because immediately after the player has to walk past chainsaws protruding out of the walls in order to avoid getting killed, and it's one of the most difficult and tedious traps in the game. Don't play this if you tend to be an impatient person. After what seems like a maze of the same wallpaper, the player will get to a narrow corridor of circular blades, and it's again their task to avoid them and not get killed. A bit further down, the original concept for Wipeout, which ABC scrapped because it would cost too much in liabilities, the player gets to a room where there's a platform that moves forward and backward across a pit of barbed wire. I'd actually contend that this is one of the easiest ones in the entire version of this game. If this game hasn't looked enough like a bulk purchase from Lowe's yet, the player has to go through yet another few chainsaws, but this time they swing back and forth between the sides of the walls. Oh, and so we don't forget to mention it, the maniac can pop out at any moment and start swinging maniacally at you, conveniently while the chainsaw clips through walls. And now that we think about it, chainsaws make perfect sense in this game because the whole point of the stream is to get wood. After that, some sort of video that has leaves in it will automatically play and it has flashing colors and it has unintelligible speech, so it's pretty much an edgy art project, which is really true to that dark web feel. Further down, there's more chainsaws, but this time they're stuck to a row rotating cylindrical column of ample girth. Then after that, there's quite a few flights of stairs in an area that looks like it was drawn by a blind person using MS Paint. Then there's a room that only has blocks in it, which were most likely used in the erection of the facility. No traps in here. After that, the player walks on a plank over a pit of barbed wire while they dodge two spinning razor blades. And of course, the planks appear to be made out of wood. No matter how depraved these creeps might be, they surely know how to have materials to put up something firm. A few more platforms forms over pits of barbed wire later, another edgy video will play and the player immediately gets to a section where there's rows of nail guns, which is perfect for the audience because they'd love to see teenage girls get nailed so much it ends in their deaths. The final stage is a room where it has four chainsaw columns in each corner, and it's guaranteed that the maniac is going to try and kill the player in this section. Although he is slow, he's a real prick. All the player has to do to advance is to flip the switches in each corner, then once the player exits, text saying, you're you're not an anomaly, you're a person, flashes on screen for about a second, then it says, demo is complete. Telling me I'm just a person after beating the hardest puppet combo game? Dick move. Version 3 of the game starts the player off in a room, and then right outside of that immediately has not only three rows of swinging chainsaws, but three sets of spikes coming out of the ground, and it seems that the more updates there are, the less puppet combo is just sticking around, and with every increase in difficulty, it's like they want to make the game harder on a whole nother level than it was before. Moving on, there's a room with one nail gun in it, which, and like other nail guns, seem to disobey the laws of physics because they're hovering over the air, as if they're in suspension, but that's neither here nor there. Well, actually, it's over there, but never mind. Up next is a circle of four chainsaws that rotates clockwise over another pit of barbed wire, then the exact same trap after that. Not too dissimilarly, there's yet another one of those traps, but this time there's two slippery slopes on either side of it that make the player fall unless they jump to freedom and get their fingernails jammed in one of their keys in the process. Yet another one of the same type of trap, but this time there's a huge pillar blocking the middle of the trap, so the player has to jump on one of the two sides while narrowly making it through the tiny little crevice the chainsaws allow. Afterwards, we come to another one of the hardest parts of the game, and that's the sets of two chainsaws shifting horizontally. You've got to be really quick with this one and jump when your reflexes tell you to. Then, there's the most mesmerizing part of any edition of this game. There's these platforms over a barbed wire pit that go from one side to the other, and their pattern is relatively unpredictable unless you stayed in one place observing them for a long amount of time. There's really no detailed method that we know of. What we do is to just hop on the most recently accessible platform nearest to you, jump and just do it. Further down the M-rated version of Happy Wheels that's ironically not on wheels, there's an interesting parkour course that you'd find in Portal or a game like it. It's a bunch of protruding blocks that are supposed to be used to climb up to a certain point. Another couple rounds of four rotating columns after that. Then there's a maze that's further complicated by spinning razors dangling from the ceiling. Then there's 
there's a floor of spikes that come up randomly, so you gotta memorize the pattern, and that's that. It gives you the same message as the first one. This one introduced the fast food world, and it starts the player out in a tiled room with a huge head of a chicken in it, and when the player steps outside, they go down the path and enter the first obstruction, which is a massive chainsaw swinging counterclockwise in what appears to be a circular room. Then, the player moves onto a room full of chicken wings, or another part of an animal, then into a room of narrow planks that the player almost has to walk like a tightrope on to avoid falling into what looks like oblivion. A good test for the player's handling and specificity skills. After the player gets past that room, they get to a conveyor belt type room where the same types of pieces of meat are being processed and further down the conveyor belt are spiked mashes that'll squish the player into a bloody and painful death every time they happen to walk under it, all while the conveyor belt is shifting forward. You gotta be really sharp to avoid death from something that's ironically really sharp. Damn, I knew I was right to never trust Lunchables, but that might not be the case here because the mashers keep on clipping through the chicken. Maybe this is a Fantastic Sam's instead of a Frito-Lay factory. After the player successfully dodges the crushers, they fall into a pit of meat and make their way to a room full of a seemingly endless amount of chainsaws, and with the whole meat processing motif in chainsaws, the name Buzzsaw Bloodhouse is fitting, but some of these rooms are more reminiscent of Home Depot. I've no clue how someone wouldn't go deaf with this much machinery operating in one place at once. Past that, the player gets to a soda fountain looking machine, you know, the one you'd find in a factory fast food restaurant and the only thing that's missing are inharmoniously placed cup lids and ketchup that looks like it was spewed anywhere other than in the little cups it was supposed to go in, like your average McDonald's. In Buzzsaw Bloodhouse, there's what I assume are razor blades, or a type of laser that cuts the player into pieces every time they're hit by one of them. After that, this version of the game ends with an end screen that says, you survived your mission. The end. Contest code violent new breed. If any one of you can decipher what what such cryptic text means, along with why a kink forum username is there, we'd love the feedback.